everybody to the first ever three sided box podcast. We got in the house tonight my partner in crime, Johnny. Breaking my podcast cherry. Breaking, we're all, we all are. Yeah, we all are. We got my brother, Michael. What's up? And we got Adamo. Hey, guys. So uh, let's see how this goes. First topic we're going to talk about the NHL playoffs. We're going to talk about standings. Yeah. The no okay. fun league. No yeah. fun league, exactly. Is that the NFL? <laughs> that's, that's the NFL. The, the no. Uh, the no hat league. Yeah, some well, there's hat tricks. So. That's true. Anyways, <laughs> let's start off with the East. Let's start with the Met. Let's talk about the top three. Let's talk about Washington, Pittsburgh, Columbus, yep. New York. Um, it's basically uh, Washington and Pittsburgh division. Um, Columbus came out of nowhere and took New York spot. Yeah, that's just unfortunate for New York. But yeah, you know, they're uh, they're all very similar teams, uh, except for Washington. That's kind of like a standout, like. You know, oh my God, team! They're really yeah. like yeah. amazing, but again, playoff curse. They just can't do it. Well, look, will Shattenkirk take them over the top this year? I don't think no. so. No, I don't see Shattenkirk as like one of those. Yeah. Man, he's dynamic. He'll turn that D around. He'll make them aggressive. He'll turn that D around. He's he's good. He's got good stats. He's a good player. But besides that, is is he a leader? Is he a? No, I don't see it. So for St. Louis to trade him, in my eyes, means he was either expendable or they thought they were getting a great return well, on the investment. He, he is a rental. So yeah, like he is going to be a UFA what, next year. What did St. Louis get in return for him? I don't yeah. know. Second round there? See. Uh, I don't think it was much. I don't remember. No, yeah. I think it was a second round. Like, yeah. I, like, I was pretty surprised. That it's one of those things where you said like... because he's a rental. Why, why, like, which, it's one of those things where you ask like, why didn't my team trade that for this guy? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I like, like, seriously. Like, you I, see always, that. I always ask that. Like, you'll see like, oh, guy goes to the team for a fifth round pick. Montreal. Why are we not giving up these picks that never no, pan out? Yeah, well, like, like I said, he is a rental. Da- David rental, Fisher, Louis LeBlanc, picks that haven't worked out. Trade, yeah. trade these picks. David Fisher. Yeah, is remember that, that? Is that the guy for the trade? Like I think that was on the bench. I think that was uh, the no, that's Yuri Fisher. Yuri Fisher. Yeah. Where David, is Louis David Fisher never played an NHL game. I think we drafted <laughs> him ahead of, of Claude Giroux. We drafted <laughs> in twenty six, and Claude Giroux went twenty eight. Wow. Wow. And, and Claude Giroux is French. Yeah, and Claude Giroux is French and the captain yeah, of the he's team. He's from Ottawa, he's guys. He's not yeah, like uh, yeah, he's Quebec. Well, he's not like Claude Giroux. No, he does. He's, he does. He's, speak yeah, French. yeah, yeah. He's yeah, from a French guy, but he's like, he's not Montreal born and raised. No, still, you know? he's a he's a French guy. Yeah. Like you know. Well, where is Louis LeBlanc now? Does he even? I think he's right, hockey. I think he's like a lawyer or something. Like seriously, like how do you not understand? Like you you figure before you draft a guy, you'd ask him like, hey, do you want to play hockey for the rest of your life or? Or are you just doing this because it's fun? I just need the that, money. Honestly, there. but kind of going off topic, that, that that's kind of like the problem with the NHL, the NHL draft is that like first round picks rarely even pan out to like their potential. Yeah, because like, the they, they draft three, based right? on like potential. They don't draft like, based so, on so need. So NFL raw, draft right? is I need this it's guy. It's boomer bust. It's boomer yeah. bust. Like either it works out. There's no like minor league to develop them. It's either you're good or you're shit. Yeah. You know, like, Kirk's twenty eighth. Wow. Holy shit. He's in his prime. But well, yeah, I but think they give how, us... How many guys round. that got drafted from like the third round end up to being like the, one of the best players? Shea Weber league. was a second round pick. Yeah. People just thought he was going to be at stay at home kind of... Yeah. I finally found the trade. God. Wayne Gretzky was, uh, you know, undrafted free agent uh, yeah. who, you know, played in a garage league for many years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I heard. I heard. I heard. Yeah. I think that's true. I, I finally found uh, the Shattenkirk trade. So Shattenkirk and Phoenix Co- Copley. Phoenix, that's a cool name. Uh, to the Washington Capitals in exchange for Zach Sanford, Brad Malone, a 2017 first round pick, and a conditional second round 2019 pick. Okay, so actually St. Louis got something. Well, yeah, that's why right. he, quite a he was going to leave anyway, so you might as well get something in return. Yeah, they didn't want to lose him the way they lost okay. last year. Okay. Uh, Troy Brower and. Yeah, uh, yeah but Brower's on a one year deal. Uh, Bacchus. Uh, Bacchus. David Bacchus, yeah. David Bacchus, yeah. But they, they were like UFAs that, that they were trying to keep, but. Brower just offered more money by Calgary. Well, anyway, Washington is clearly showing that we, we did a move to try and get over the hump. I think it's the GM trying to save his ass. If ever they get exited, he could say, at least I did everything I could. Well, he did. It's, What's it's his name? Uh, 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 Leonsis? No, that's the owner. What's the GM? I forget. I know the old GM is now the GM of the Golden Knights, but I forget. No, the, the man. GM we're talking about the pe- Predator, uh, the Capitals or yeah, the Blues? Yeah. Okay, I'll talk about the Blues. Armstrong. Armstrong. We're talking about Doug Armstrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah never yeah. mind. Okay, my bad. I w- Either way, like, you, you can't have a team that talented and, like, not win. You know what I mean? So, yeah. if, th- if this is not their year, man, like, you know, I, I, if this is not their year, I would even consider trading Ovechkin at that point. 
Like if he, if he hasn't done it at this point, I don't even, get off. But my it's team. not even him because it's not like he doesn't perform in the playoffs. Yeah, but you gotta you gotta start He's, doing something, and he takes up so much salary space. Yeah. You say maybe instead I need two forwards yeah. that could score it's sixty like, points yeah. like, instead of one yeah, that's like, under ten. I don't think that's the problem. I don't. Th- there's something about their defense I find in the playoffs where like. They don't play with the same confidence. There's no intensity there. There's no, exactly. They, they can't. They don't. They don't, have they don't turn on like like a when second level time. Teams turn it on. They, there's yeah. a switch that goes there's off. There's a and second it's like level. Now it's, they go. Yeah. it's like there's a play like, yeah. like like there's like even it's why San Dustin, Jose. It's like why Dustin they, Brown in the regular season you wouldn't dream of paying the guy the money he makes. No. But, it, but then in the playoffs you're like he's money. Of course, yeah. duh. Yeah. Yeah. We need ten of these guys. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, anyway, that division is owned by right now the Penguins and Capitals. Yeah. Columbus surprise, well, big, let's, big surprise. Let's go back. Let's talk about Pittsburgh. Yeah, Pittsburgh, Let's defending reigning Stanley yeah. Cup champions. They're plus forty seven. Yeah. They're scoring goals. They're not letting in goals. Yeah, like they have almost three and a half goals a game. One of the best like centers, top to bottom. Yeah, top well, look, to their goals losing. for are two forty five, but their goals against is one ninety eight. Their yeah. goals against not not that great, but yeah. their goals for is really good. Yeah, really high. And this is that. What, what's the date today? The 17th of March, yeah, but as we're recording it. These are the to stats. Be, to be honest, 198 is pretty average. Yeah. Oh, it's, no, it's it is. pretty average. If you compare it to Columbus and Washington, though, we're talking about this division right oh, now. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Relative to the division, yeah, yes. Yeah. But, like, you know, they're, they're, they have, let's say, 20 or 30 goals more than their next guy against, but they also have, like, 20 or 30 goals more for. for yeah, yeah, obviously. But th- when it comes to playoff time, yeah. again, going back to turning that switch on, Yes, they did it last year, yeah. but they got they caught lightning in a bottle yeah. with. But Matt they have the benefit of you know if you shut down Ovechkin in Washington, yeah. you shut down like sixty percent of the offense. Yeah. If you shut down Crosby in Pittsburgh, you've not. Yeah, there's like it's like a hydro. Lines. You've yeah, not done anything. Yeah. They, they they have a <laughs> little Greek mythology yeah. for yeah. you over there. Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> they they the problem with Pittsburgh is that they have a blitz and like they they have so much speed and just sheer talent offensively yeah. and depth top to bottom. Their first three lines. The uh, Hagelin Benino Kessel line was really HBK. the line yeah. that destroyed Heart kid that that won them the cup. Yeah. It was the line that won them the yeah. cup. So like I mean, there's a lot of emphasis on Crosby and how he did it, Malkin how they did. But I find like their depth offensively, like you said, top to bottom yeah. centers. Crosby and Malkin is, tire out your best lines, and then Kessel and, and Benino run in. And it's playing. All it's games. playing your third pairing defense, and that you're gonna get bombed on that. Yeah, you know, like you're gonna lose. So like. I don't know. Like they, they're another really dangerous team. Like I said, they, they turn it on, and See, you, but the, you, you guys the, could attest it. That they're kind of like the Blackhawks, right? Where they just turn it on the playoffs. Yeah, they just, they just do it. All right, really David. Is. I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that statement right there. But uh, the look, Black the Penguins. When it comes to the Penguins, is that Crosby always turns it on in the playoffs? But is it everyone else's? Because look at, look at when they win the cup. The whole, like you said, you have the HBK line on fire when they won the first cup. Their third line with Jordan Stahl basically was their, you know, their go-to line to, to win them. That, that's what it comes down to in the playoffs, especially in, in the trenches when you're in the, in the cup final. It's always your third and fourth line that get you through the tough times, and your first and second line are basically, like, riding their momentum. Be, be, if they're hot, they're hot. If they're cold, though, it's almost impossible to turn it on when you're cold. What, when you get into the third and fourth round, so, like, the conference final, even sometimes second round if you're playing a good team, it's the top two lines always cancel each other out. It's that third line to me where like if you have that's the that difference much between talent. two two and three two. It's that third line is gonna score that third goal to put exactly. you exactly or that overtime yeah. goal or something like that like like when Benino scored against Washington to yeah. bring them past them you know so like it's just like I said a lot of emphasis is on defense in the playoffs but I think the third line for any team is the is the key to to winning and Pittsburgh has that. And also, right. like even though they're the defending Stanley Cup champions, I feel like all eyes are still on Washington. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's what we yeah. said in the video before, yeah. right? And Pittsburgh, like honestly, it went. How many games did it go to against Washington? Seven games, right? Was it seven? six? Six, six. six. They, yeah. they, they they even did it pretty comfortably. You and, know, yeah. so. and Washington won the first game. Yeah. So and, they they won. It was basically a four-one series after that first game. Yeah. And you say really like every that's the thing about Washington. Every time someone says, yeah, let's say they won two games in a row against Montreal, they won three in a row. Like you guys could not screw this up anymore. Yeah, it's kind of like Santos. They, they were kind of like Santos. Exactly. Yeah. They're just they get You're there. Really I think they've inherited San Jose's curse. Yeah. 
I really think so. Because at least San Jose got to the damn final for once. But yeah. San Jose has always been, if you've seen your has always been in like the conference final. Always been yeah. in the mix. They, they, they yeah. lost in six games to yeah. Chicago in the conference. We always they make lost fun of them because they never make final. it all the way. But exactly. They get but they, they, if you get to the conference final, you're one of the top four teams in the league. Yeah. Like you're clearly there. So like if they've been that consistent, and Washington hasn't get, got past the second round with this much talent, there's clearly either an issue with coaching because of the that belief, don't want it that or, or the the exactly the players. You have to put extra effort into winning in the in But the I just don't get what their culture is. You know what I mean? Like, you're defined by your leader. Right now. Washington. Washington. Okay. You, you know, and we're, we're always going back to Washington because they're the leaders. But you go back to, like, a, a team. The face of the team is its captain. Like, when you look at Crosby, he, he's the identity of the Penguins. Yeah. Hardworking center who can do everything and be he's everything. He's the best player in the league. Fast, yeah. killer, class act, cares about the game of hockey, knows about the game of hockey. Ovechkin, brute force, Incredible offensive ability. Beyond that, is he a great hockey mind? Not particularly. Like would, I, he, would he be a great analyst of the game? Not really. No, his IQ is not, not yeah, like exactly. Crosby. It's not like Crosby's He's IQ. just it's, raw talent. He just, he just knows where to go. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. And like the whole team is kind of like that, where like all the players are very talented and it works, but then when it comes to beating a, a team, like really getting past... Like well, overcoming team, that hump. Yeah, yeah, when you play a team for seven games, it's a psychological battle. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. It's a game of wits. Yeah. If you don't think you're going to score on that goalie, you're not scoring on that goalie. It's all confidence. That's why Patrick Roy won so many damn games. Because he, he exuded that, you're not going to score on me. Yeah. He wasn't that great. Some games he would let in eight, seven, six, a lot yeah. of times he would even do that. Yeah. But he won games. He just freaking did it. Because he, he became that identity of the team. Yeah, it, it, he wins it when it counts, yeah. which is one thing that the Capitals don't do. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say. Is their it's regular season uh, success the reason why they're that bad in the playoffs? Like, is their confidence always so high that I they just think I they can overcome anything? I don't think it's anything? a confidence issue. I even don't think it's that. I think it just comes down to intensity. The intensity is not there. It's when you're winning games, it's a sign of playing well, sure. But at the end of the day, hockey... And any sport really is about intensity. Yeah. The level at which you're competing. If you're taking a shift lightly, you're gonna get burned. Yeah. And I feel like they will have gimme shifts where they're like, oh, I'll dump it in and, and then hey, guess what? It didn't clear all the way. But you know where someone picks it up and you fly down and score. Well that's what happened. Like yeah. I remember I think it was like game five or something against uh, I think Hornfist scored like the overtime goal and like they brought this guy in, like Mike Weber or something like that from like Buffalo. Weber. Mm-hmm. Mike Weber, not oh. Shea Weber. Not, yeah. not, that, that's going to be the name the of your son. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and I remember there, there's a loose puck, and he just he just panicked with it. Like, I don't know what it was. He, like, he, he seized panicked. up. Yeah, no, he, seized he seized up, up and he just he hit it with, like, the tip of his stick, and it went right to Hornfist and went right through the legs. And I'm just Horny. like, this is exactly why Washington's going to lose, because they can't get it done. They don't yeah. have that mentality where it's like, I need to stop making these and, stupid mistakes. And it's a bit of bad luck. But, yeah, of course. I mean, you make your own luck, right? But look, when it comes you, to any championship team, yeah. what team ever won a title without any luck? Yeah, it's true. No, it's 100%. Well, they probably go into playoff games with the mentality of a regular season game. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, they like, don't turn it on. We'll just do We'll do what we do in the regular exactly. season. Exactly. That's, what's that's a very good point. That's yeah. a very good but that's point. What, but that's, what that, that, that's going back yeah. to what I first said. Yeah, exactly. That switch, they don't have it because yeah. the, their success yeah. is a detriment to what their playoff is because they don't know, like, they don't understand it. Okay, yeah, you were good now, but in the regular season, how many times do we say where, where okay, like the the Sens or the Habs or the Preds or or whatever, even the Hawks, they'll lose, you know, five nothing to the fucking Panthers. Yeah. Right? The next game they yeah. reset. It's exactly. A new day. Because what? Because they, it's a new day. It's a new day. <laughs> but it's it's because some game. You tell me, eighty two games, these guys will just wake up and be like, no. fuck it, I'm not playing no. hockey today. You know, they don't care. But the when it comes thing. to the playoffs, everybody Every game, shows yeah. up. Like, but the Capitals don't know. Th- I mean, look, we're talking <laughs> out of our ass, basically, but, like, but, yeah. like it, it, I think it's when you haven't done it for so that long. That seed is planted where, exactly. like, they don't have the, the belief <laughs> that they the can doubt. get it done. Exactly. They have too much doubt in their head. Exactly. And, like, as much as I hate to say it, like, God oh, damn it. You're good there. We're all smoking. <laughs> 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 we have uh, our special guest John Laurinaitis in the so building tonight. Yeah, no. Oh my god. <laughs> go, go get him some water. <coughs> go get him some water. Got a bottle of water. I think I'm. I think I'm getting better. No. I'm <laughs> I get we'll right better. back. My name. <coughs> all right. All right. I'm good. Yeah. Sorry. I literally had a a, a human being. In <laughs> you had a big fat dick in your mouth. <coughs> but uh, yeah. Wow, that was weird. That was very <laughs> like, like it's like you just swallowed flesh. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, 
That was funny. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. We're taking yeah. too much time. There's yeah. 15 minutes yeah, in. That's not bad. It's about a quarter of an hour per division. That's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. We're, okay. We're, well, we're, let's talk about the, the Blue Jackets, though. Like, they're surprising a lot of people this year. Yeah. Look, uh, they they came out of nowhere with that uh, Cam Atkinson trade, right? Uh, no, wait. That was last season, wasn't it? No, he was always there. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure he was always there. <laughs> yeah, right? Hang on. Who did they long. trade for uh, from Nashville? Uh, Seth Jones. Seth Jones. Seth Jones. Right, Seth Jones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Johansson. That's it. They Johansson. gave. They gave him. Uh, yeah, that that's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, well, honestly, it worked out that, for both teams. That trade. Yeah. That that trade is the definition of working out for because where would Seth Jones be with with, with the defense we have now? Mind you, the fact that he got rid of Weber, he fit in perfectly in that top but, spot. But you know what? You're right. Yeah. But that's why I think David Poyle is a bit of an idiot. Because oh, he's a big idiot. Because did, if, you're gonna Weber, if you're going to trade Weber, if you're going to trade Weber, I'm pretty sure you could trade Weber. I'm pretty sure the Flyers organization is stupid enough to what trade Claude Giroux. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty you, you sure know, we could have won one for one for Claude Giroux. Yeah, but one but thing we're missing is a number one center. The Flyers isn't, uh, aren't the Flyers the reason why Shea Weber has such a huge contract? Yeah, they <laughs> signed him God to a 16-year <laughs> deal. Yeah. And Weber's like, oh, wait, Nashville, you're not going to sign me for the money I want. Well, fucking Philly will. But we, <laughs> we, were, we had to sign. Anyways, we, we had to sign that contract be, because Suter left and we were going to lose one or the other. So Suter already left. So we're like, okay, well, we have to keep Weber. That was the year Suter left? Yeah, it was the same yeah, offseason. They're, they're both oh, the uh, uh, UFAs. Yeah. Wow. That's great planning. Sorry. Oh, yeah, that was when Minnesota we- went, like, yeah, crazy insane, and then did yeah. fucking nothing. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to sign Parise then and Suter. the missing Suter. ingredient yeah. was Devin Dubnik, oh, a backup oh, only from Ottawa yeah. or something. Like, from, what? He went from Nashville to, to Montreal, Montreal yeah, to fucking uh, Minnesota. Yeah. Did nothing anywhere. He was in Edmonton, remember? Yeah, Edmonton. When, when they, I think it was when they drafted Hall, yeah. and that was supposed to be, like, the big turnaround. Yeah. Nope. Nope, and now he's like... They pick him up, and he literally went on one of the greatest tears in goalie history. He won like 35 of 40 games. Yeah, he was like, everyone's like, this guy's the best in the trophy candidate. Like, yeah, you know, thank God he, he didn't win it. All that to say thing. that, you know... Uh, it was back, to Columbus. back to Columbus. Just surprising team. I don't know if they have what it takes. But, but you know what? They have scrappy players. Did they? Have Foligno, they ever won a game in the playoffs? Um, yeah, they have. Yeah, Did they, they have. get yeah. swept? They're, they're, they won they're, against they're, Pittsburgh. They're, no? Their first, se- no, well, yeah, exactly. I was gonna say like the, their first series they played Detroit. They got swept. And like they got swept. They got destroyed. Uh, but then they played Pittsburgh. I think it was 2014, and it was actually a close series. A very yeah, good it was series. Like a six game series. Uh, yeah. I think uh, I think it was like uh, was it like Matt Calvert scored like an overtime goal. Like Nick Foligno scored an overtime goal. Like it was like their first wins in overtime. It was a really good like feel good story. Yeah. They obviously end, didn't end up doing it because Pittsburgh always like beats all those teams despite yeah. having a flawed roster like back then. Uh, so yeah, but like now it, like they have a really good young talent. They they got sod from Chicago uh, a couple years ago. Seth Rollins. Uh, he's <laughs> Seth Rollins. Uh, <laughs> we still have Horton. Under their contract? Uh, no, he's in Toronto. Toronto, Toronto, Toronto got him. Toronto. But he's yeah, he, they playing. traded him for, uh, what's his face? The guy David who, Clarkson. David Clarkson. <laughs> oh, well, the yeah, worst yeah. deal ever in sports. Doesn't Phoenix have Chris Pronger's contract? <laughs> and Pavel yeah. 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 that's Isn't yeah. that amazing? Yeah. It's <laughs> kind of like what the that's Browns did with Brock yeah. Oshawa. They took on salary. So the, you imagine being that GM, like, hey, can I trade for that player that doesn't play anymore? Sure. Sure, <laughs> I really don't know why you do that, but here. That just shows how, like... Terrible. That's what happens. There. That's what happens when lawyers get involved in sports. Like they ruin everything. Speaking, speaking of, of something like I read up that the Coyotes general manager, he he was he's he was talking about how like the now the formula to win the game is all advanced analytics. Oh yeah. And, yeah, he's one of those. It's he's really young. It's John Chaka, whatever his name is. Oh, is and Max Kellerman. Just yeah. listen. Just listen. He, 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 he said like 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 uh, like the numbers are gonna come and like you don't really need to look at like the the draw talent of the player and like analyze that. You just need to look at more of the analytics. And I'm like, it's not a formula. You can't measure heart. A Tom Brady will yeah. not impress you at the draft, yeah. but he's gonna he's gonna be the greatest player of all time even, because there's all the baseball, intangibles. The teams that do saber metrics, right? Like the Oakland A's and whatever. Yeah, they won a bunch of games. They didn't win the freaking pennant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you'll win some games probably by playing the stats game, but will you go all the way? No. No. Because going all the way takes that magic. If you look at all the exactly. Super Bowls in the past, they're not. Well, they just toughed it out and won because statistically, that's no. It's moments like the Edelman catch. You're going back to that Columbus Pittsburgh thing. Yeah. <laughs> they won two games. Yeah, it was yeah, four, two they, yeah their it was record in the both playoffs. They have, they have ten franchise career, career franchise playoff games. They got uh, swept. Two, two wins, two wins <laughs> eight losses. <laughs> wow. That's yeah, but you, you know what? Look, they, they, they have a they have a sustainable what, what year team was that? now. What was the last time they're in the I 2008, 2009, they they got swept by the Red Wings. In 2013, 14, they lost four two uh, to Pittsburgh. Yeah. Like I said, it was it was a, it's tough. Like I like yeah. that that roster was clearly not going to do anything. 
Um, can I say this though? Go ahead. There's an expansion team that entered the league in '98. '98 or 2000. Their first season was 2000, 2001. Yeah, that's a 2000. Oh, wow. So they're 17 years old as a franchise. No, I know. In a league that was already well established. To be fair, though, look at the Ottawa Senators. They were bad for the first seven, eight years. Yeah. And then they dominated the 2000s. Yeah, they They did. They dominated. But don't forget, Canadian market. People want to play. Well, look, I'm I'm not trying to toot my but like Nashville's not a conventional market either, but they built. They built. Uh, yeah, a they, fan base they, they and were they were competitive built. in the Western Conference. We are, yeah. Which we we still are, say. which is but something... Exactly. I'm finally it's seeing the seeds pay off for Columbus. They're finally relevant. And I think not enough people are giving credit to Coach Tortorella, who really, I find, finally found the perfect fit of a team. But were you saying yes. this he time did, last he, year he, that like he's just an outdated coach? He, yeah, he is. He is. For any other team, he's an outdated, antiquated coach. But for some reason, this ragtag group of like... It seems like, it seems like they're a team of basically like the boys. Like, it's a bunch of guys that are, like, half Mick decent Foligno hockey players. Yeah, yeah. And like, a bunch of grinders, a bunch of, like, but, like, what's the skill, too? But basically, guys that if you tell them, hey, go skate, do your job, they're, like, willing to do it. They're all yeah. young. But they, the, the the thing that impressed me about Columbus the most is that they all bought in to yeah. the system. So, like, yeah. whether it's right or wrong, or whether you can say it's outdated, they all bought in, and when you buy in, and you 100% believe, you will at least make the playoffs. At yeah. the very least, if not make, like, a first-round, you know, win... Maybe a second round yeah. magic win type of thing, you know. Like way, it's good to see a young team. Absolutely, doing well. they have Cam at- Atkinson, Matt Calvert, all these guys. In the season, going back to like but that's, yeah. that's what's rule. Right. Yeah, see, just, like, yeah. Like, I agree with too. Yeah. Let's see if they can be consistent. Yeah. I, I have a rule a that yeah. where you need to be consistent two years in a row mm-hmm. for me to believe in in what you're doing. But I believe that too. Yeah, because there's flukes. Flukes happen all the time. It, it, I, I really it's, don't think it's. I think they have the talent. I, I, really I hope do. it's not a fluke because I I like them. I have nothing yeah. against this franchise. But the I fans. I mean, have you seen their games? Yeah, it's, they have good the fans. fans. Are insane. They have cannons roll out every time they score a goal. <laughs> People are dancing shirtless in the crowd. It's really like a. It's become like a cult. That's following. what you need. It's be- look look. I find like the the two biggest franchises, at least in most recent history, to be, like in a non conventional hockey market that you have to like look at and be like, wow, how did they do it? Is like Columbus recently and Nashville. Like those are the two teams were like yeah, we're like they did they they they're in an unconventional hockey yeah. market and they made it work and are continuously making it work. Yeah. So it's like it's really like admirable to see those like two teams, especially Columbus, who haven't been as successful as Nashville at least consistency wise see if uh, see if Vegas can pull that off yeah uh, I doubt it but no no way anyways alright so that's uh, so we got Columbus we we'll head out to the uh, Atlantic Division Atlantic Division Montreal, Montreal Ottawa Boston Toronto Tampa yeah. Florida yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll start at the top yeah. Yeah, just, just talk okay. Montreal uh, you know inconsistent now, this is where well. they play really well. my true colors come into f- yeah. to fruition but here with, with Montreal t- to me like uh, I like the hire of Julien but like I find like just the the sheer hype around this team where like they get like a guy like Dwight King and they think that like depth pays off in the playoffs, but it's not like depth like to me like I always reference like Stanley Cup winning teams. So you look at like Pittsburgh, like yeah. with they have ha- Highland, depth. Highland Benino Kessel on the third line. Like they just have fourth liners on second to, to four lines. Yeah. That's not gonna do it. And like a Byron is not gonna win. No, it's not even anything. just that. It's 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 it, to me when it comes to it's like okay. Team, look at Chicago. Okay, you have Taves, Kane. Usually they're separate on two separate lines, right? So you got your top two lines right there. Yeah. Your third line, okay, is your gritty line that's gonna get you through and past. You got three, they have like Hosa and Isimov and like exactly. And you got you got guys like that. But when it comes to depth, okay, Montreal got stacked on crazy depth. So they got third liners literally playing yeah, on, every, like on every line. Mitchell, but, uh, but they don't have they don't have Taves. They don't have Kane. They don't have Crosby. They don't have guys that are gonna score for them, and the, and then the third line guys are gonna open the, up the spaces for them. They yeah. have none of that. They just have depth, depth from head to toe. You have Max Pacioretty who has like thirty seven goals and like never produces in the playoffs. Never produces in the playoffs. What? He's an almost forty goal scorer. That's what I call him. Yeah. He's an almost almost forty, 40 goal, scorer. goal scorer with few passes. I think Rene but Bork you, produced more than you, that. You know <laughs> what? Like uh, the playoffs. A, a lot of ha- a lot of Habs fans will say like, but you know, Patretti has. I think it's like the stat. Like he has the second most goals in the playoffs. Guys, he helped a guy. Had, listen, the, listen, listen, listen. Take his car out of the snow listen, the other listen. day. <laughs> like, listen, give listen. it a shit. And like, and like, like, like they're. They're just like priding on like, oh, he's only behind Ovechkin. He's one of the elite goal scorers. But tell me when has he scored an important goal? Uh, when has he scored? He's an open head he, specialist. When, when has him he and Radulov are open head specialists. They don't. Pr- you'll never see him, Gallagher, or Radulov score a beauty. You, it's rare. That and I think he's had like seven hat tricks in the last three seasons. 
which means like 21 of those goals came in seven games. Yeah. Yeah, and it's always against again the Sabers, the Blue Jackets the, when they the, were shit. The same was blue. Yeah, yeah. Was one of those teams games. like that. That's who he scores against. He, he doesn't score goals against the mm-hmm. against the Lightning, like the Bruins, like that, the Senators, the Leafs, the, the you know the Montreal rivals. Yeah. He scores against these random teams but where teams that. turn off. Maybe Let's get back games. to you were saying you like the Cole Julian hiring. I think personally, it's one of those where it's caged by the he has to speak French. Yeah, because it is. Time. Yeah, Notice yeah, how yeah. the second but a French coach becomes available, hey, you know what? You're Maybe right. it's about time no, to fire this coach. You're absolutely right. He is but the best coach is, available. He, he, yeah, but that was he just coincidence. Is, he yeah. is a just top five head coach in the league. He, he, he was a great hire. He's one of the best hires. He's respected. He's revered. But think about this. This is what I always say, and it's it's calling a spade a spade. The Montreal Canadiens had Michel Terrier before. They fired him. Then they hired Claude Julien. This guy's gonna fix all our problems. He's he's gonna be great. They fire him. Years later, they say, oh, maybe that Michel guy will work again. Mm. If he wasn't a good coach then, mm. how's he going to be a good coach now? Nah, it's a different it, team, it, right? If he proved that, oh, this is the change I made, this yeah, is what I did. Yeah, but I just say, like, you if, know? if you're playing the same tune twice, hoping it will work. It's not going to work. Like, we've been doing the same thing every year. Jacques we Martin ride Carey next. Price until nothing oh, happens. God. But, but that's why, like, I find <laughs> recently in this year was the first time you actually saw a little bit of a the decline in Carey Price's game. Yeah. Yeah. Carbonal. He, yeah, Guy Carbonal, yeah. Yeah, Guy Carbonal. But, like, P- Price, we all know he's the best goal in the world when healthy and when playing well. Mm. But, like I said, this year you saw his decline a little bit. Recently he's been picking it up after yeah. the Junior hire. But let's be honest, the guy is feeling worn out. Yeah. And that... <laughs> <laughs> you sure? My throat is going crazy, but it's, it's cold weather in Montreal. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm calling oh Turkey. Oh, my God, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that pretty much sums up. I mean, you're the, carrying the, the whole Canadian. workload of the entire <laughs> team. team. So, yeah. you know. Like, and a lot of people are like, oh, Jordy Benz. Like, we all know Jordy Benz is a pretty good player. We all know, like... Yeah, uh, Bergevin isn't the worst GM, but he's not going to win That guy, li- like, usually teams have scouts, right? They go out, they hey, scout the waiver juniors, wire. they go to see other teams play. Him is like, guys, said, what's the the waiver wire today? Okay. Matt, okay. Flynn. Oh, Matt Flynn, all right, I want him on my team. First line with he Max watches videos already. on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Dano was Matt the first Flynn line population. center at the uh, Habs Preds game when, when we went. They're announcing the, the top lines and everybody was booing that he was the, uh, was? the first one. Deno. Oh, yeah, Deno. But he blew with the Hawks. He never won a cup with them. He, he was just in their he, system. He was there for like 20 games. Jesus. And he was like a good like fourth liner. Oh my God. Anyway, th- that's the problem with the Habs. Going back to what you said about the French Canadian coaching thing. It's it was a, a co- line, pure yeah. coincidence that Julian was available at this point in time. And going back to the rotation is that Terry A left, goes to Pittsburgh. Leads them to a Stanley Cup final. Loses to the Red Wings. The next year, they're the last place in the Eastern Conference. Or last in their division. Gets fired. They win the Cup. He goes back to Montreal and does nothing. Julien left Montreal, goes to Boston. Spent six years building that team through the draft. Drafting Marchand, Lucic, bringing in Savard. Uh, 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 molding Berge- uh, Bergeron Horton, to a hi- Horton, getting yeah, Horton. <laughs> Getting Horton, Seidenberg, uh, bringing uh, Chara, in Mark Recky, Recky yeah. uh, catching lightning in a bottle with Tim Thomas, having Rich a great Beverly, backup. That guy's backup. a sick player. Yeah, he was yeah, sick until his career he was a unfortunately great ended. Four, that, that guy's um, a definition of an amazing fourth but, liner. But, but yeah. Jared Stoll. Yes. What did Claude Julien yeah, do? Kelly he, too. he built Chris a good Kelly, yeah. team. Yeah, yeah, yeah like Chris Stoll. Kelly, we, we traded to him. Uh, but what Julien got to work with now? People think they're going to win the Cup this year. Montreal, their window is closing to win the Cup. They have three years Max, nice. when's, when's uh, uh, Price, Price is a free agent? Two, two Here's my now. question. Oh, there you go. That's their they window. They bench Nathan Bollier, who on any other team might be on the third defense Dog. easily. And, and Alexei Emlin's playing, yeah. and he's terrible. No, 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 no. Hang on now. Emlin, I, I have a partial, I like his style. He's not great on the keeping the puck in play, but he's, like, if you notice, like, statistically, it's a weird thing, but it seems like we win more when he's in the lineup. It's so strange. Either way... I don't know if he just intimidates people and they don't want to go into close gaps. Highly, highly doubt it. <laughs> but regardless, I think it's more like Weber's like presence just like elevates his game. He's like, oh, this guy well, sucks. Before Weber was here, <laughs> the same thing was happening. Okay. But you know, maybe it was just because they were afraid of Subban, you know, uh, turning it over, falling over near them. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, where was I going with this? What was I saying? Uh, with well, Emlyn, you like you? Uh, oh yeah, the, the Bodier, 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 yeah. We have too many. We have seven defensemen in rotation. Plus, like, a couple extra in development with Sergachev. And, like, we have too many defense. We're like, guys, it's good. We have defense. Good. 
So maybe, maybe work on getting a center, any center. We have no center. Like yeah. Zero center. Do you hear that rumor about getting Cole Giroux at the, the trade deadline? No. Um, we're going to give up. Like, Carrie Price. That's, just, that's like, what the rumor you was. You have to give up Carrie Price. Carrie Price for Cole Giroux. No, I don't know if it was Carrie no, Price. No, but you'd but have to. Like, I think there's there's nothing Montreal has to offer. <clears> you have to give a first round pick for the next 10 years. Unless if it was Philly, it was Shea Weber. Yeah, but that's not the type of trade that happens at trade deadline. Anyway. Look, like, oh, like exactly. for, not, not today's NHL. For example, no. like, uh, I, I'd like to, like, I think Montreal and Nashville, like, and I was kind of referencing because it's, like, the team I know the most, but they have, like, the same problem, or, like, or at least they had the same problem. Like, number one center, we need number one center to, you know, like, we can't go with David Legault on every playoffs, yeah. right? So, like, yeah. I learned that the hard way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he was a great power play specialist, though. Yeah, yeah he led the league in power play goals uh, for Ottawa last year. Yeah, like eight. Uh, so, so, like, Joe, Nash, as much as I disagree with the way they handled some of the trades, at least David Poyle went out of his way. He's like, okay, guys, we need to do something. And he went out and traded Seth Jones, you know, for a guy like Ryan Johansson to be there. Yeah, he like, took a risk. He, he yeah. took a risk. And I can appreciate that that ambition. And that, at the like, same time, Seth Jones know, being yeah. drafted was also a risk at the time, right? Yeah, but yeah. he was also the best player available yeah. at that time. But you, you know, swapped like, a really good player for a really good player where you needed a need. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, we were... defense we, wasn't a pressing need for Nashville, but offense def- was. We were stacked on defense. Yeah. We didn't know what to do with, with Seth Jones. You know, like, yeah. he was he was in the third pairing. He was He's obviously a very good player. Whereas Bergevin... And so, and so Bergevin... He hasn't made anything, and everybody's praising him. Look at what he did. He got Jordy Ben for this and this. It's like, but what has he done to really improve the roster? You're gonna go with depth throughout the whole way. We always see the same problem. What I always say they is can't this. score against all the big teams. The, in the East playoffs. is so easy to win. It really is. The, the, the Montreal Canadiens won the conference regular season with Sergey and Andre Kostitsin as their like two offensive juggernauts. Remember that? Yeah. You remember that when that happened? How embarrassing was that for the yeah. NHL that that yeah. happened? In a, yeah, in but a, to in be fair, that was also at a time where, again, Crosby was with Terry, not they were yeah. right yeah. off their Stanley Cup win. Yeah. The Senators became shit. Yeah. The Islanders were nowhere to be found. The Lightning were in a kind of like a flux situation. Yeah. Hurricanes were to be found. And the Bruins were just at the at the beginning of their yeah. two, three Dynast. year domin- yeah. dominance, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. So it was kind of a weird year for the East in general. Yeah. So New York was always there, but kind of choking. Yeah, you know. it's okay. good. So I tell you, no center. It's it's been our present need for ten years at least, yeah. not more. Yeah, and Nothing. we 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 had a whole we had a period after the lockout of journeyman players like you know Kovalev as great as he was, fantastic as he was, <laughs> God probably like the greatest that. player of all time. <laughs> after <Yes>. Carter, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, we had like Michael Ryder, like David Avish. Remember like, when you brought back Ryder a couple of years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my God. God like, think so about bad. it. What is the point of all this shit? <laughs> Ryder was like a third liner on the Bruins in their cup run. They yeah. were using as depth scoring, <laughs> which is great. Again, that's why, but that's, 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 that's exactly that's that's what depth. the Habs would do. Throw them on the first line because yeah. they don't have someone like, already there. I, that's I, think, I think really what epitomizes the Habs is when I saw Davey D'Arnais on the first line in the playoffs and I was just laughing. He like, was always been he, he, he's so bad. He's so I've bad. been saying <laughs> it for years. He's not even a fourth liner on most other NHL teams. Yeah, he has no size. He was a bit quick. Okay, wrist shot. That's it. And that's another problem for Montreal. They always go for size, but like these random players that have size. Yeah. And not like, not like, like size and skill. Yeah. Just size. And yeah. I find it's like a dying formula in the NHL. Exactly. Now you have like you, third and fourth liners yeah. who are you, fucking top scorers. You, you, you need really guys that point. are six feet tall and quick. That's yeah. what you need. To yeah. Have. Like you need like a guy like... For example, you know, Ottawa has a couple of them. You guys have some really fast skaters. We do. Yeah. It's... Uh, <laughs> you have Bobby Ryan. <laughs> not even go with that complete waste of Are we going with Ottawa now? Let's yeah. Let's jump to yeah, the let's Senators. For, let's jump yeah. to my Ottawa Senators. So we hired Guy Boucher this summer. Yeah. They have the second best player of the Crosby draft. You know, Bobby Ryan. That's yeah, true. Drafted yeah. number two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right behind yeah. that, that the dog, other right. guy. Yeah. 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 Well, how many goals does he have this season? This year, I don't know, twelve or something yeah, like that. Nothing. Fun. But he, okay, look. To be fair, and I'm, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, and I don't want to because mm-hmm. I'd like Bobby Ryan as a person, as yeah. a hockey player. I want him out of here as fast mm-hmm. as possible. It's a waste of money, uh, but. Uh, to be fair, he's been injured the last three years. Yeah. Consistently injured. Yeah. He has not been healthy ever since basically he came to Ottawa. Um, but that's still no excuse. You're an NHL player. Everybody else is producing, and you are not. You're you're dead weight at this point. You know we we've been winning games without him since he got injured. We've been red hot, and now he's coming back from injury. Because I think you're 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 giving a chance to like your younger players, and you're not forcing him into the lineup. 
Would that be like a, a cause? Who's him? Ryan? Ryan, yeah. But he hasn't played. But that's what I'm saying. Like, when he was in the lineup, you're kind of like, oh, well, we traded for him and well, we have to put him on I'm first sorry, he's supposed line. to be a 40 goal scorer. That, that's what he was in Anaheim. I don't think he would have been. I was aiming, like, like when I saw the trade, I was like, okay. He, he, I think he'd be really good. He, really has good, solid he scored 20 goals, goals yeah. once in three years with us. That's not good. See, James Neal has not scored less than 20 goals <laughs> in his nine year career in the NHL. <laughs> That's what you call a great player. James Neal in Dallas was clutch. He yeah. was clutch. Other Ottawa players. Yeah. So, yeah. Greg uh, Anderson, Stone. Mark Stone, yeah. you know. Uh, that, that's your two Hoffman. big points right Mike there. Mike Hoffman. Yeah. And you know? Carlson in the middle. Turris, Turris is leading Turris, the, the team in goals. Mm-hmm. Quietly for That's the third crazy, season yeah. in a row. That's insane. What a trade, uh, Brian. Okay, he, that guy did should I have not... a statue built for him just for, for making that trade out. <laughs> did I not tell you, though, when the trade happened that it would work out? I think I told him. He's like, he's like, oh, we gave up David Runblad or whatever, whoever the hell it was. Yeah. And for Kyle Turris, one for one. I'm like, look, Kyle Turris, he was on. It wasn't one he, for one. We gave up a draft pick. Whatever. He, he was on, like, the Coyotes. He like, didn't do shit. Bobby Ryan's 30. He's supposed to be in his prime right now, okay? I think he's a bit past. Honestly, I think he's past his prime. First year with Ottawa, 70 games played, 23 goals, 25 assists. Not Pretty bad. good, yeah. Not bad. A little bit subpar. Not the best return on investment, but still yeah, something. Yeah, not bad, okay? Second year, last year, <coughs> 78, no, sorry, two years ago, 2014, 20, uh, 2015. 78 games, 18 goals, 36 assists. So his assists are up. He's playing more yeah. of a team game, but again, only 54 points in 78 games. Yeah. Last year, 81 games. He played almost every single game. 22 goals, 34 assists. Mm. What are you doing? What are you like, like? Look at Anaheim. 82 games, 31 goals, 26 assists. 82 games, 34 goals, 37 assists. You 81 also, games, 35 goals, 20. You also assists. have to look at the 64 columns. games, 31 goals, 28. Okay, but he Anaheim, played with Spezza in this first year. He did nothing. No, no, I know. I, I'm not saying Ottawa was bad. They had Alfred and Spezza and all these guys. <coughs> obviously talented. But like we I, didn't have Alfie. He never played with okay, yeah, Alfie. Well, they, 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 we they, signed. They, they traded Bobby Ryan because right. we lost Alfie that, so, that summer. So like. Same day. For me, for me, is that in Anaheim, when you're playing with Getzlaff and Perry in their prime, uh, those guys were honestly probably the best duo in the league. At the time, yeah. At I the don't, time. I don't disagree with and that. And he was, he was the third pair. So, he was the third guy. I don't see why Bobby Ryan can't pop in 25 goals. When I Mike Hoffman, Kyle Turris, and, and Mark Everybody Stone, else is producing, the, yeah. Carlson scores more goals than him. That's not right. Weber scores more goals than him. Well, if they, if, they, if they decide to get rid of him, they should do it soon while he still has like, that name. That, yeah, but he's, he has a seventy a seven point five million dollar contract yeah. for like another picks. five years. He's, he's, he's a high paid player on the team. That's Second is Fanuf, and then it's Carlson. I just find it amazing that you have Craig Anderson in the net who can. It's weird because even when he was in Colorado, this guy was like solid. He's lights out as a goalie. Yeah, he's the like is with, uh, with Anderson though, back before he came to Ottawa. Very streaky. Exactly. He'd be He'll very good like and very bad. Very eight good, games very bad. Are, wow, man, how'd you do that? Then, like, I can't win a game if you paid me. But, like, I, f- I feel like the, the, the best thing about Ottawa is kind of, like, they have this, like, kind of momentum where, like, they're riding on that kind of, like, feel-good story of Anderson. Not just that, they're but kind of riding on Ottawa that, like, has belief in their new coach, the, the, you know? There's two so things they can that, be dangerous. There's two things that, that we haven't mentioned. First thing is Ottawa has an identity. Yeah. We ha- we're a gritty, hard-working team with uh but uh, a team that 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 is united yeah you know we, we have, we're fighting for one cause and mike condon he's played lights out anderson was gone for I two and a half months i got it you called garbage we <laughs> we we tapped into some untapped potential <laughs> right there that the canadians fucking wasted uh he's probably gonna leave anyways at the end of the year yeah. uh he, he wants a big contract yeah well look not just that but i'm sure he wants to start he's yeah. not gonna start in auto i'm pretty sure he could start in like like the Coyotes. Even though backup no, job is like sense. dream work for a lot of people. Yeah. Like, well, he yeah. proved that he could play a decent... Look, two yeah. seasons in a row, he's had a big bulk of games. Last year with Price, this year with Anderson now. But this year, lack of crazy pressure. Montreal, there's an intense amount of pressure. He crumbled upon it. Ottawa, we had no expectations when yeah. he went in. We we didn't think anything of it. And the market is not as big in Ottawa yeah. as it is here in Montreal. So another for 20 bucks, I, if he does leave, you guys trade for Budai or something. Oh, maybe, yeah. You're going to get, get our other back though. Or Condon goes to LA, uh, Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Fleury, Fleury, maybe Fleury and Condon are going to have to Maybe. Hey, they were team. attended in Pittsburgh for like a week, yeah. and then we picked them up from Pittsburgh. Yeah. So, well, look, like, um, uh, overall with Ottawa, I, I think like the biggest thing is that like they kind of have that like 2012 feel where it's like pesky, pesky sense. sense type thing. I don't think like, no. It's like us against the world type thing. No, but not, except with not, more talent. No, it's not just that. It, we have more of a structure now. Back then, it was we were just winning games. We don't know how we were winning games. 
And then two years ago with Hammond, we, we don't know how we're winning games. Now we're a good team. We got structure. No, yeah. We got order. Our our uh, Carlson's leading the league in block shots. This guy was supposedly not a defenseman. Now he's one of the top defensemen in I, defensive. I always I mean? always like Guy Boucher. Uh, obviously, like I think I, I think the one three one really screwed him uh, <laughs> later on because people were starting to solve it and do really quick breakout passes and to be, beat that kind of like zone kind of pressure in, in the neutral zone so like I think that he eventually adapted and started using more mobility to his advantage so like I really liked him as a coach and I think he was a great fit and you guys hired a really good coach like when you hired him and you got Mark Crawford who's also a very good exactly. coach Mark Crawford's our as assistant, a, coach. assistant coach assistant coaches most people don't know they control a lot of the special teams well, look penalty at kill, power plays what we said yeah. before Jacques Martin who else did they Rick have Tockett. yeah Rick Tockett like Jesus Christ well, look, you got uh, three head coaches. The the as Pred, your the Preds have Laviolette, and we have a Hall of Famer and Phil Housley. That's Phil that, literally probably the he's best a Hall American defenseman ever. Yeah, ever. Yeah, but you know? going back to Ottawa and our recent oh, sorry yeah. our recent game is look at the injuries: Mark Stone, uh, Hoffman, Bobby Ryan, all injured. Yeah. We're still winning games because yeah. we have an identity now. And um, shit, I forgot what I wanted to say. I can't remember for the life of me now. If you bring those players back in, it's it's. It well, they're slowly, scary. slowly coming honestly, back. Honestly, the uh, tourists out too with a broken finger mm. at one point for a couple I, I, games. Honestly, I, I Anderson's now injured. We're still in, winning games. In the East, I think Ottawa could beat any single team, including Washington, besides Pittsburgh. I think that's the only team they would really have a, well, a lot of trouble always, Ever since we beat them in 07, 10 years ago, we I haven't actually said them. that I told him as I walked in the house today, I said if Ottawa plays Pittsburgh in the playoffs, I feel like Ottawa will move on and they will take the East. That'd be a really good, like I said, a real good story for him. And like, yeah. like I said, I, I really hope for because I'm rooting for I like the team. Ever since I saw that Ray Emery matchup, and it, like, remember when yeah. they were fighting and scrapping out on the playoffs and they yeah. like, uh, when they had the stripey jerseys, I think? 2006 yeah. was one of the best playoffs back, I've seen. Back in the, back back at, 07. Well, yeah. 607 was back one of the, the best Chris playoffs. Phillips that was amazing. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. Deep. You know, that's, so. that, that's when both the East and West had, like, Tom Pricing really and yeah. Joe Corvo yeah. were Ottawa center defensemen, okay? With Wade Redden. Uh, Chris Phillips, Anton Volchenkov, and Schubert, Christoph Chris, Schubert. Well, no, he Chris was on the team, but he was like the seventh guy. Who was, no, he was. He was, who was Redden's <coughs> partner back then. I can't remember. Yeah, like, yeah, no, he left right. at that point. Uh, anyways, okay, let's move on to the West. Patrick Eves. We're, gonna, we're, we're not going to. Patrick Eves was on the team. Yeah. All right, West. We're not going to go into like Boston, the wild card. Ah, the wild uh, card is, is such a mess. It could go either way, and yeah. honestly, we're 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 already forty minutes into this thing. Yeah, but the East is the deep one. Thought yeah. about. There's so much crap going. Well, on. look, let's go through it. If we if we have time yeah. at the end, we'll yeah. we'll come back. All right. The West so is the easy one. Central: right. Chicago, Minnesota, Nashville, St. Louis. Let's talk about Chicago. Let's talk about the Stanley Cup champion. Okay, honestly, three times in without- five years, baby. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Without. It's, Woo! it's three to six, but without trolling, look, look let's just take it seriously. I'm not trolling. Yeah, I'm being very serious right now. I, 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 know, I, I know. I know. I know. They're Ooh. they're obviously a good team. They have a lot of a lot of talent. But the, the the thing is for me is that they don't have the same experience and depth that they once had in their in their. That's in what their runs. I, that's what they say every no, no, year. No, no, and no, then no, they no, win no, it no, with no. a new set no, of guys. No, no. Hartman is not as good as like Sod. Okay, like and Panic is is just a cast off, and he's just. Riding on the coattails of Hosa and Tate. Let's be honest. But he's not that good. Yeah, if he was in any other team, he'd be a fourth line. But the, but, but, but the difference okay. is between Richard Panic and like a Davy Darnay, okay, who rides like the coattail of like Patch Reddy when he's you know shoots in the open net, is that Richard Panic does it against the big teams. Darnay does not. Okay, but the, it's because he has a talent running. Anyways, point is is that uh, we all know. Chicago. You're saying talent wins cups. Well, no yeah, shit. Yeah, but he does. It's not him that that's producing that. It's not like him like making they, crazy plays. Well, just, then again, then, then again. It's even more detriment to them. They're like, oh my god, look they're, how good they are. The biggest they can thing, make these guys, the, better. The biggest thing with Chicago in the playoffs that makes them dangerous is the system they, they play in. Coach Q. The, the, the system they play in is so dangerous because they play to their absolute strengths. Yeah. They're so fast. <laughs> they stretch the ice so well where you, you have to be a really vigilant in a counter. it seems like they all have hands. They all have hands. They could all shoot yeah. very well. Meanwhile, in Montreal, and they have pure good speed. luck if you can make a straight pass to the tape. Good <laughs> luck with that. Like, that, that's like, people should clap in the audience when they see that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> like, you know, like when people cheer, like when you clear the puck on a penalty yeah. kill, yeah. completed pass. <laughs> Light, lights, Ooh. fireworks. Every game you see Keith <laughs> shoot the puck torch. to like Hosa on a breakaway or yeah. Patrick Kane. So like every game, yeah, with like a tiny little gap, yeah. and they score every yeah. single time. Keith. Like Crazy. The, 
the Thanks for chewing him on and the puck doesn't bounce his way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Screw off. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, I, I, need to keep, I, I need to keep this. Uh, I'm going to keep it a bit more PG. I think yeah. later on, maybe in the playoffs, I might get a bit yeah, angry. Yeah, you might get more angry. <laughs> I probably yeah. will get more angry. Uh, like I said, with Chicago, uh, they, the, another big thing that makes them dangerous is that, like I said, uh, as a fan of a team in the Central, understands how the Central works, is that they have everybody's number in the Central. Minnesota, I remember, like, what was it, like 2014 when Chicago lost to LA in the playoffs? They played them in the second round. Mm-hmm. Minnesota was like that kind of underdog, like, really good yeah. team. They destroyed, they destroyed St. Them. Louis. Yeah, they St. Louis. But, them. but then I'm like, I'm like, okay, this is the year Minnesota has to get through Chicago. And they got destroyed. Wasn't that the sweep? And yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Minnesota, Minnesota. Patrick Kane is the Minnesota CEO swept of the Minnesota Wild. <laughs> Minnesota swept them in the regular season. I'm like, okay, you know they're showing Minnesota some progress. Minnesota was eight and zero against yeah. Chicago in the regular season up until this year. Yeah, and like Chicago just plays so well against the yes. Central. I think I think honestly the worst like, like matchup for the for the Blackhawks. I think they would still re- win the series, but the worst matchup would be the Predators. I think it's a very tight series. It's always the tightest series out of everyone. It's tight because it goes, to, it goes like three overtime games. Yeah. It, but that's the thing. So it could go stupid. either yeah. like five yeah. overtime games. I'm not, I'm not saying we're going to win. I'm just going to kill yourself. I'm not saying that we're going to win. I'm saying we're the hardest yeah. Yeah. opponent for them honestly, in the Central. You're right. In the Central. Yeah, honestly, that is yeah. a true point. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think even though St. Louis won last year, I mean, let's be honest, Keith wasn't there game one. If game yeah. one, they would have won game one. Yeah. So, like... I'm just saying that they have everybody's number that makes them dangerous, and we all know in the second round and in the cup final, they never lose yeah. with, this, with this group. Yeah. So it's basically conference finals. <laughs> They're literally undefeated in yeah. the second Con- round. Conference the final and first round is your only hope of beating them. <laughs> so I'm like really hoping that my team could somehow beat and them. And by your Minnesota only wild. hope, meaning like, LA needs to be there to yeah. beat them for it. Yeah, Speaking so. of LA, this Pacific Division shit has got to stop. With these good teams in the Pacific Division being better than LA, yeah, well, the NHL has to fix this problem. Well, we'll, we'll get to that. Let's jump to Nashville. Yeah, all right. Let's jump to Minnesota. Michael, no, look, Minnesota. Okay, let's just a quick little summary. They're finally living up to their potential. Yeah, they got Parise and they got Suter years oh, they, ago. They have everybody they, who scores like they're, 15 they're goals. They're finally yeah. doing well consistently. Yeah. They the last couple of years they've been all good, well, they but had, they're inconsistent. They had the shutdown, but they didn't have the punch. Now yeah. they have a bit of punch. Yeah, yeah, and we'll see how long Dubnik's wave. Last is it? Is he permanently oh, going to be he's, good? He's been good or for is about it, is three it, seasons now. Yeah. So, you know, it's, uh, All right, Nashville Predators, Michael, your team. Uh, inconsistency has really like riddled our season for the is most Yannick part. Yannick Weber taking up Shea Weber. I, I honestly, I hate Yannick Weber. I, I couldn't really, believe that. I, I hate. Was like, I, I was praying he would take six. So I would have yeah, to get him. a new jersey. <laughs> <laughs> That's just that, but like maybe the GM was like, maybe no one will notice. Yeah, yeah. Well, His different guy. Like maybe we'll throw the C on him too. Like. Look, hey, where's Chris Johnson? Yeah. You're <laughs> no, look, honestly, look, Mariota. Not, not, look, regardless of what you think, the Preds have really good fans. And yeah, honestly, yeah, last yeah. year, San Jose yeah, fans we who have a really loud stadium, butt. they they said Woo-hoo. they said yeah. they, Is that their they said yes. they said no, they they don't say that. Don't listen to them. He's an idiot. Uh, That's what they do. Just listen. When they're playing St. Louis and Pittsburgh, they were always saying like, oh. You know how's how's the stadium? Is it is it too loud to play in? And they're always like, it's nowhere close to as loud as Nashville was. If we get through Nashville, we get through any stadium. So like, I really like, I was like happy to hear that. But anyways, point is that like, it, I guess inconsistency has really riddled the season. Only recently, in the past like 10, 15 games, have we really like found our way. The rest of the season, we've just been going through injuries. I think we had the we had the most people on IR this year. The Subban was out, Yossi was out. Only I think it's been like twenty five games where we had our top four all intact playing, and we're seventy games in. So I mean, a lot of injuries happen. Like I said, it's no excuse to play like the way we did. Here's a, uh, here's here's the here's the question of of the of the year. What? Are you content with PK Subban's play? Honestly, as the season progressed, he's really improved. He has. Yeah, he has he improved. Has, he has. He's, when I used to look at the stats at the beginning, he was really like he was trying was too hard away with the yeah. with the difference. Yeah. And now it, it, it the gap's it's, closed. He's he he the the things with Subban I found at Montreal, he was trying to be like the man. And yeah. here in, in Nashville, I think we're allowing him to be like be yourself, be that ambitious person, go do your thing. But he hasn't been like doing the stupid spins that he did in Montreal. He's been using his speed, giving a nice breakout pass to Arvidsons, Forsbergs to use their speed to get Patrick scoring. Arvidsson. He's a beast, okay? I don't want to... Well, a, he's a, I you love guys also have the benefit of Peter Olivier is a fantastic coach. Yeah, right? and, and he, he is... He's the, the, shed a couple if pounds, you, but... Uh, if, you, if, you have, <laughs> if you have a really mobile defense, he is the coach for you. He, he, he uses his defense the most of in a short amount of time. And he, and do you remember <laughs> what I told you a while back <laughs> about a coach in, in Nashville? Yeah, you said like a Trotty. You guys Brian need, a, you need a bona fide coach. Yeah, you need yeah. like a legit bona fide coach that can take a team exactly. to a final. And, and you, you can't. We had we had that. And you got a guy who took Carolina to a win 
and Philly, unfortunately, to a tragic loss to the Blackhawks. Yeah. But the thing but is, with with, 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 with with those with, with those teams, like like what makes both me, those teams were not great teams. But as I'm saying, they have the underdog factor. We're yeah. not. We're, everybody's overlooking us. Even last year, we had that a little bit. We brought San Jose. Mainly, we got destroyed in Game Seven. Yeah. But we brought them to Game Seven. If but we won like, that, I'm not sure we we, we wouldn't re- have beaten the Blues. The in real the X factor final, is you know? Will Forsberg be able to play without the open space that he, comes in the playoffs? He ha- but the thing is, he's that's great, what I need to see. He's streaky in the playoffs. But when he's on, honestly, I, I think he's he's up there with the elite. I need him to elites. play like Peter. That's what I mean. Yeah. I need Not when he was with Nashville. Though. Yeah. No, no, no. Because that <laughs> Not was a injuries and, and falling over in the shootout. Yeah. Whereas the Canadian, everyone <laughs> remembers that yeah. moment. Everybody, yeah. The spin that he yeah. didn't spin. It's like, yeah. ugh. <laughs> so, he just died on the ice. I think he was just tired. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I, I, you know what? I'm Year after year, Nashville has been getting better and better. Now they've they've changed. Like you know, Weber leaving is a different era now. Yeah. They they so, have to really like start to. But I feel like they, I feel like they gave the team back to the team by doing that. You, almost like you take Weber was the anchor, right? It's like he's the high paid. He's the millionaire. They pass it to him. Pass it to him. Pass it. To him. He ha- he has to score. He has I feel to like hit. He has to. This. Now it's like, oh wait, 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 wait no, we're no, so much like, more mobile. There's no real. Thing. There's no real face, but they're all still as talented. Yeah. Which is better. Which I, I find I find it took a lot of like like. Uh, Plus, it, you got a token black character. Exactly. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> we uh, the the thing is that Oops. that I, I liked somewhat about the the trade was that Yossi was allowed to finally be in the spotlight a little bit, and yeah. like a lot of the other guys were finally because now there's all oh, the Weber show this that. Well, like now we have guys like Yossi who are incredibly talented. We have, our, our, I think we have the best top four in the league. I think we have uh, by far the top, best top four in the league. I don't think anybody comes it close could be to the mobility. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't really think so. But, but yeah. Yeah, I'm saying top to bottom, <laughs> defensively and yeah. offensively. No one could produce that much and be that good defensively. You know, like I think it's pretty hard. But like I said, inconsistency has riddled the season. We've really come together as a whole. I'd like to see us make make a run in the playoffs. I think it's really. I think I thought last year was a really good opportunity because Chicago or like Kryptonite was kind of out. And we had a chance to beat San Jose. It didn't really work out. But I'm hoping this year we could at least, you know, uh, make some noise and, you know, do something. So I don't, I don't know what your thoughts are on the team. <coughs> I'm hoping. Look, for I a think good run. I think if you guys don't run into the into the Blackhawks first round, which would be hilarious. Uh, I'd love to film that and throw this on the YouTube channel as well. Uh, if they don't run into the Hawks, I think you guys could go, you know, potentially deep. A lot of people are are saying because uh, Rene has a like he he he's very hungry and even at the end of like the last San Jose game he always says like I'll like we play San Jose he's like I'll, in the interviews like I'll never forget that game seven where like we let in all these goals like, he's like I want revenge like, he's always very hungry you know so I'm hoping please God just play good consistently in the playoffs because in game seven against Anaheim he's the only reason we won game seven but yet again against so, sometimes he makes like incredible saves but he lets in the shit goal you know mm-hmm. like so like. I, we just need consistency from him, and and we, we just need to show up, and I think we'll, we'll be fine. We'll at least compete and go to Game 7s with team. All right, well, let's move on to the Pacific. San Jose, I think we could all say they're the most talented team in the league. Uh, <coughs> I, I think Chicago is. I don't try to troll. I do no, think Chicago no, is a little not more really. talented. Um, but San Jose is way more talented than Chicago. Know. Pure the, talent? The yes. issue with San Jose has always been like, who's their goalie again? Martin Jones. Never mind, former, actually, yeah, he's <laughs> former LA King. <laughs> former LA King. Shit. <laughs> oh, totally forgot he's still playing. Never mind. <laughs> former LA King. Oh, man. Yeah, he's really good. <laughs> former Boston I remember, for 15 minutes. I think in his first game with the Kings, he had a shutout. And I remember just watching him play, and I was like, this guy's really good. He's one of the only backups to go starter <laughs> on another team. Yeah. Like when you sign right a backup away. quarterback yeah. from another team in yeah. the NFL and actually play really well. Because yeah. he got traded to Boston. Yeah. Then Boston traded him to San Jose but like I, 15 I, minutes I, later. I, I remember saying that was the biggest mistake Boston made. Yeah, but I Rask, think that was the intent the whole time. Rask, in my opinion, is not, is not the guy. He's not clutch. He's not at he's all. Not. He gets temperamental. He's yeah. got a weird he face. He tunes out. Yeah. He's got and, a weird face. Yeah, he's got a weird face. like scary, pedophile-looking <laughs> goalie. People he looks like he's Finnish. Yeah, it's like he looks like the singer of him. Yeah, Bill literally. Bill. literally yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, Martin Jones. Like, Actually, I'm you got Martin out. Jones. That's then you got Brent Burns. Uh, Honestly, I think yeah. he's the best defensive player. Yeah, and you have his, his uh, classic still on the team. Brent yeah. Burns. Yeah. Classic so like, Braun. Yeah. Dylan. Insane. Then you have oh, uh, well, who you have? Joe Thornton. Oh, Pavelski. Marlo, Joe Pavelski. Oh yeah. Uh, Logan Couture. Logan yeah, guys Thomas like, the biggest. Yeah, like guys like Don Scoy, like popping in like 15 goals a season. Like, what's happening? Uh, I mean, like, just top to bottom, I think they're probably the most scary team in the West. Like, I think them and Chicago are the favorites. Yeah. I would say 
San Jose is the better team. What's amazing is that they've been consistently good. They had the same players for a long time. They haven't been like you know, and they didn't change trading or whatever. But yet you have Anaheim and LA that have been winning all the Stanley Cups. And that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like you have to feel bad. A what do you have to do in so, in, in, so in California? This is Tuukka Rask. Yeah. This is Vil Valo singer of him. Yeah. They're pretty similar. <laughs> yeah. Which, by the way, him's retiring. Oh. Sad. Please. They're going to fair world tour. I, please come to Montreal. God, please. I saw you once. I need to see you again. Anyways, back to uh, San Jose. Yeah. Uh, uh, fantastic yeah. team. Nothing else to say. Ducks. Mm -hmm. uh, lukewarm. Like, I, th I think he said like the first thing. They're lukewarm. Yeah, they're lukewarm. They're like, yeah, okay, they're a good team. If I had to build a hockey team, I wouldn't be sad if I had the Anaheim Ducks. But like, are they exciting? No. D are they gonna get better? No. Are they clutch? So, yeah. Do they have? Gets laugh. I think he's like, I think with the Stanley Cup and the balding, he's going into like soccer dad <laughs> mode. Where he's just like, uh, I've done my career. And he owns like a, a Honda Odyssey yeah. van. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're not a team that really. Uh, yeah, he's been balding. Strikes fear. Yeah. yeah. But they're not they're not hungry. That's all it is. I don't yeah, see them. Harry's hungry. kind San of Jose, died off as you like feel a that hunger. Like you felt it last year, and now you really feel like I feel like Brent Burns is like, God damn it, I love hockey so much. Would you just give me the damn Stanley Cup? Like really. I get that vibe off him. And he exudes hockey. Yeah. Well, how know? do you guys feel about Edmonton this year? Uh, That's great. A, Good, great I would honestly, Connor I really, McDavid really changed the franchise. Yeah, how many yeah. first overall picks was, did they I get? Honestly and then nothing. He's, uh, he's honestly surprised. he's a true they, once in a they, generational player. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's, uh, uh, His speed is, I've, I've never he's seen He's the fastest player in the world. I think, I think he far. might get hurt one day with that. He will. He's going to get really hurt one day. I'm scared. I don't want him to. Look, I don't like him. Personality wise, I think the guy's the most boring person I've ever met in my life. He's like, remember when we used to hate Crosby yeah. back in high school because yeah. he had no personality, the yeah. purple lips, yeah. looked like an idiot. Yeah. You know? I was about to say, it's yeah. like Crosby. Crosby got hurt in the head. Yeah. He got a lot of concussions and he, he, he had seasons where he played like 30 games. Yeah. And, and people thought his career was over. And then when he came back, remember, yeah, he had not, he, he was like 70 points in 80 games. Yeah. So like really not Crosby. But then he, he learned how to play the game but, again. But, it's but I find he Crosby has a personality now. He laughs at the camera. He'll sign autographs for kids. Oh, I He'll think smile. I think that's going to come. Though. McDavid literally is like just straight face yeah. all the time. I think that'll you know? come. I think it's, that's going to change. I hope so because I, I don't want to hate him. Well, he's, no, look, he's, he's, he's a great younger player. than me. Great he's player. years old. I he's mean, a like... great player. He's going to be the, one of the best in the world, maybe of all time. Yeah. But lack of personality... In today's NHL, you need that. You need to sell tickets. You need to make people buy your jersey for more than just your skill. Unless you're Captain Serious. No, yeah, yeah, but Jonathan Tapes, he makes <laughs> jokes. He no, has I his know, thing, know. you know? And I'm sorry, Patrick Kane is the guy to is the star, yeah, yeah, while uh, while Jonathan Tapes is, is the rock. There's, there's no rock in Edmonton. If McDavid gets hurt, they're back to being shit. Let's be honest. They're not back to being shit. But not like first of all, pick playoff but, no, team. No. no. Yeah. Take they're out like, Darnell Nurse. Take they're back out, to uh, McDavid. And they have nobody. Darnell Nurse is not that good. The only reason you mentioned it is because he's Donovan McNabb's nephew. <laughs> okay, enough. Okay. There's nothing wrong he's with not that. that good. <laughs> he's you my boy. Mention, you always think like, oh, he's the future of defensive. Like, he's really not. I really want him in Ottawa. Let's okay, just well, say that. Please take him. He's probably like going to be your sixth defenseman, if not no. your seventh. Okay. Anyway, they got Peter Carelli, who basically put Boston into salary cap hell for a while. Yeah. Won them um, a cup, but screwed it up later by yeah. trading Yeah, but, but their newest GM does even worse. His biggest yeah, mistake, like and the writing was on the wall for him when he traded Johnny Bochuk. I mm. find that was the stupidest yeah, yeah, move yeah, yeah. you could ever do. For nothing. Yeah, what about Calgary? Like a complete what about idiot. Calgary, Another Alberta team. Calgary is... is kind of skimming through in basically here. We don't want to go on too long, so... Calgary is basically as hot as it gets, to be honest. They're, uh, I mean, uh, they're, they're really coming together. I don't know how... They're coaching... Uh, well, by the way, if 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 I might, I just want to go back to San Jose because we, we we mentioned them as one of the best teams in the West. I think really what's gonna make them fail and what has made made them fail in the playoffs was coaching. I don't really think Peter DeBoer is really a good coach. Oh yeah, no. I agree. Yeah, I this think is, this is the man. When it comes to like him and Quenville, like Quenville will out coach him. When it comes to like him well, and like but yeah, goddamn right, you yeah, son of a bitch. <laughs> wasn't this the guy who at one point coached <laughs> the Atlanta <laughs> Thrashers? Who Peter DeBoer? DeBoer. Was it him? I'm pretty I sure he did it one time. He, he coached. He coached the, uh, the 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 Devils. The Devils when they went to the Cup final. Yeah. So I, like I don't know. I, I I don't know if he's a good. But coach. the year that the Devils went to the Cup final was a fluke of Brodeur and and kind of Kovalchuk showing up. And Parise. And, uh, Adam yeah, Henry. Parise, yeah, he really Adam Henry. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, clutch. That guy's clutch. He won two series off an overtime win. Yeah. One against the uh, what was it the Panthers? The Panthers in yeah. Game Seven, and then one against the Rangers in Game Six in the Conference Final. Peter DeBoer is only 48. Wow. Like, I think he's a good coach. I just don't think he's good he enough to win the Cup. never played in the NHL. He's playing the IHL. 
Nice. Whatever that is. The Blizzard Milwaukee Siege. Admirals. That's the uh, Preds. I know who they are now, but I'm saying back then. Uh, Peter DeBoer was no. He was the uh, Florida Panthers coach. New, New, Jersey, New Jersey Devil of San Jose Sharks. But he led the, the Panthers to 41 wins in 08-09. 32 wins. 41 wins? Yeah. And 30 losses. They made the playoffs then? Third in the Southeast. Remember that? No, they didn't make the playoffs. He's never made the playoffs. He, the only two times ever made the playoffs, he went to the Sound of Cup final. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, yeah, How did he win 41 than... games but didn't yeah, make the playoffs? How did he not make the playoffs? I guess the Southeast was a really good division. It's like the Atlanta Thrashers then... just destroyed everybody at that time. But then got swept later. 41 wins and they didn't make the playoffs? Yeah. Well, Apparently. Tampa Bay, Washington. And there must have been the other teams. Because remember back then it wasn't like... Oh, mind you, 41 points. Yeah. How much is that? 41 is 82 points. Yeah. And yeah, but yes, the overtime loss. Florida was in that division. Uh, for Washington. Was in that division when they won the yeah. president. Trophy. Washington, Carolina, Florida, Atlanta, Tampa Bay. That was the year Carolina had that miracle run and almost beat Pittsburgh. Washington, one hundred eight points. That was a good Carolina, year. Carolina, ninety seven. That's the clutch. Florida, ninety three. Florida had a good year and still didn't make the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty yeah, I think sad. I remember that now. The year later, 2009-2010, Washington won twenty one points. The only team to make it out of that uh, division. And they choked it up against the Habs. Yeah. And then two thousand twelve, two thousand thirteen, Washington. 57 points. How's that? Oh, it's short and lock up. Yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. like that didn't make wow. any sense. One of the best wow. seasons. How bad was every team in that division? Yeah. <laughs> it's like NFL uh, yeah. crap here. All right. So uh, yeah, Calgary. So, so, sorry about that. Yeah, Calgary, uh, obviously one of the hottest teams in the league. Uh, I don't know. They're how literally far. flaming. Yeah. Yeah. They're white hot. I wouldn't say they're Are right. they going to do fire. good in the playoffs? Huh? Are they going to do good in the playoffs? I think if they, if they could grab uh, Edmonton, I think they'll win that series. And even if they have Anaheim, I think that they could do an upset. Yeah, I think they'd get revenge. Didn't Anaheim eliminate them? them? Yeah. yeah, two years ago. Yeah, yeah. In like interesting storylines both five. ways. And remember, they were they're young, you know, young yeah. hockey. Like it was like Sean first Monaghan. taste, you know. So you see these. You always have to look back on history to see how the future is going to play out, right? Yeah. So hockey, there's always these teams that make it to the dance or get close, and then they, then they like they get creamed or something happens, yeah. and they just go, "Wow, we can't have that again." So that way, that builds them for when they get back in that yeah. situation. It, it just to they get that you know what, not this time. To to me, like I think, like I said, similar to San Jose, another big issue with them is their coach. Mm. I uh, like. And, Ooh, I don't and know their goaltending the is very are. often uh, like often on. They have Brian Elliott, but like he gets pulled sometimes, and they put in like whoever their backup is, Johnson or Chad Johnson, know. Ocho Cinco. Yeah. yeah. Or I don't know, I don't even know if if, if, if it's Chad Johnson or is it Carey Ramos. It is. I don't it even is. Carey Ramos playing or I don't even know what that anyway, was happening. All right, last question because we're already hit an hour. St. Louis Blues or LA Kings? Who's making the playoffs? It's it's uh, one point four point race, equal games played. Who's who's making it? I know we said this in the other video. We all think St. Louis ended up pulling out, but like, does LA really not have that much of a chance? You know what? LA's been getting playing better, and St. Louis I feel like is in give up mode. Yeah. So while I think mathematically, it's tough just because there's you know there's 12 games left and it's a four point gap and these things tend to stay the way they are. You yeah. Know what I mean it's hard to get a string of wins. Yeah. Uh, all they need is one losing streak LA and it's pretty much over. Yeah. But that being said, since they got a Ginland Bishop, it's like everybody's happy again. So I mean if they do squeak in, sure, they got a what would I be happy? But think of the yeah. matchups that would happen if the Kings make the playoffs: Chicago, LA. And if I had my way, Calgary Edmonton, or Revenge Calgary Anaheim, that'd be a good first round. Insane, and then Nashville would play Minnesota, Minnesota, Minnesota. Yeah. which could be interesting too, because then instead of you guys having to play friggin' Chicago for for yeah. once, you could play each other. Yeah, we never played Minnesota. And wouldn't they have a number? But I would rather play them over Chicago. Which, any day. which could start a whole new. If any team, if any team is capable, it's LA. But exactly. The, okay, look. The this, thing this is, this is uh, sorry. This is this is LA's remaining schedule. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wanted to mention quickly yeah, the, the the thing is, is that St. Louis I find like even if if they made the playoffs like yes they have the Chicago St. Louis rivalry but I don't feel like they're a hungry team like they they I feel like they're just gonna be there and losing like five yeah, whereas so LA if they play, they're team. gonna be oh shit it's playoff time LA whenever it makes the playoffs uh you know a little and then less they, they got, got destroyed really last year I'm pretty sure they're not too happy about that either yeah you know all right yeah. check this out yeah. so Calgary Edmonton back to back mm -hmm. Winnipeg. Rangers, Oilers, Calgary again, back to back. It's a tough schedule. Uh, Vancouver. That's March. That's a pretty good. Then uh, Coyotes, 
Yeah. Oilers, Flames again, so they yeah. play them three times. Yeah. Chicago, Anaheim. Yeah. That's how they end the it's year. That's a tough, tough schedule. That's a tough schedule. That's yeah. LA's schedule. I'll, I'll try and find St. Uh, Louis. St. Louis fast. And they fast. recently played St. Louis like, a couple days ago and lost at home, I think, 3 1. Yeah. yeah, and they just, I think they beat the Sabres 2 0 the other night. The, the problem they with LA is that they're such a low scoring team. Yeah. They can't 173 score goals, 474 goals against Which LA. Makes no they have sense. great defense. They, they stutter, I mean. Yeah. Completely stops the other team from Kid scoring, but like I said, scoring goals is a huge issue. Jeff Carter has been silent. Uh, this oh, he still has like 30 goals. I know, but relative to his potential. So St. Louis's schedule remaining. They have I find this probably. I think I think it's more of a cakewalk. Like, oh, wow, he's been scoring a lot like two easier goals. Yeah, yeah, oh my God. Look at the Tarot. Yeah, he's like yeah, yeah, pretty cool season. Yeah, well, you know, another thing, I don't think they should have given him the C. Not because they shouldn't give it to him. No. Brown should have kept it. I don't see it. Yeah. It made no difference. Hey, let's change it. Yeah, you know I mean? like, like you didn't make the post one time, and then you get, you get rid of the guy. And yes, okay, he maybe he didn't deserve the contract he got. Maybe it was a little bit too much, but you still paid the guy. You made the decision. You stick with man. it. Anyways, so St. Louis's schedule: uh, Phoenix, or Arizona. I'm still uh, yeah. old school. Yeah. Uh, Avalanche, Canucks, Flames. Coyotes, Coyotes, Avalanche. That's much easier. What? That's, that's March. And there you go. Predators, Winnipeg, Florida, Carolina, Avalanche. The yeah, St. Louis is making. Yeah, when, when you yeah, yeah, that's your answer. Right there. Done. The Done. thing is, the thing is though, is that, like I said, I rather see a hungry LA yeah. team at least compete because I feel like St. Louis, if they're in a, in a series with Chicago right after they beat Chicago, and they don't have home ice, yeah, you're screwed. You're done. Yeah. Well, imagine LA makes the playoffs after that schedule. Yeah, but that's that means St. Louis is the worst team in the world. <laughs> no, but like just for LA alone, you, going into the playoffs. If you like lose to much, the Avalanche, yeah, like, with that much power of oh beating those God, teams. Yeah. You know, yeah. All right, so all excited here. <laughs> so that's it, guys. We spoke about the NHL playoffs, yeah. potential playoffs. That was our first podcast. Mm-hmm. Kind of skipped the wild card of the East, but whatever. Yeah, but we, you know, that Montreal conversation went on a little bit too yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, that, That's the local thing happening. Yeah, exactly. But just, just so everyone knows, me, the host, David, Senators fan, the co-host, Johnny, Habs. Habs and Kings. Habs, Kings. Let's say Habs, a little <laughs> bit of Kings. I would go more Kings, honestly. Yeah? Yeah. At this point. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, since Jeff Carter got there, yeah, I, I've been yeah. loving them. I've been having nothing but fun. Cups, it's great. <laughs> Woo! Stress and crap. So. Strippers and, and, and cocaine yeah, just yeah. everywhere. Jared Stoll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got Michael Predators fan. We got a Damo uh, Habs fan-ish. Kind of gave up kind on them. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll see. Yeah. All right. So that's it, guys, for our first podcast. Uh, I'll, I will be back next week. With a Power Ranger review, if Johnny wants to join, if you if he ends up going yeah, to go we'll, see it, I'll, I'll get in there. Uh, Michael maybe will be there. Adam will, will probably, <coughs> be probably be there. I'm gonna go see it four times. Yeah. Literally, I am. I'm going Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Oh my God. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, so that's been it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Like the video, comment what you think. We'd like to talk to you guys. Uh, share with your friends, and if you're on SoundCloud, thank you for listening. And we hope that you come and tune in again. We'll try and do this again for the playoffs for NHL. Mm. NFL will try probably do a draft one. Yeah. And uh, a lot more nerdy slash sports stuff to come, guys. So thank you so much for listening, and we will see you all next time. Take care. Later.